my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three and a half year old named Kylie and I also have a 23 month old named Mia. Now a very great area of focus in implementing Montessori at home with your little ones is this idea of helping your child learn care of self skills. And if you've never heard this term before, care of self, it is exactly what it sounds like. You are helping your child learn how to attain the skills that they need in order to care for themselves throughout everyday life. And this does include things like hand washing, teeth brushing, hair brushing, bathing, toileting, as well as learning how to get themselves dressed. So something that you can do as a parent from about the age of 12 months old is to begin providing your young toddler with independent access to their clothing in their bedroom. This means that it's all down at their level where they can access it whenever they'd like. This not only empowers your child as they can now choose their clothing and decide what they want to wear for themselves each day, but it also provides them with many opportunities to begin practicing those skills and learning how to get themselves dressed. Now there are many options out there as far as the actual setup goes for how to provide your child with this access to their clothing. And we will touch on that in this video today. But I also know that sometimes when you're first getting started, it's just easiest to see it in action and then be able to use those ideas as a springboard and to kind of work with what you've got. So from one busy parent to another, today I would like to take you on a little tour of both my toddlers and my preschoolers Montessori wardrobes. Okay, so I do want to dive right into that tour for you guys today, but there is just one thing that I wanted to mention up front, just in case you started thinking about it as you were watching the video. And that is the fact that there is no one right way to provide your child with access to their clothing in a Montessori home. There are so many different ways that this goal can be accomplished using exactly the materials that you have on hand. So there's really no need to go out and buy all of these different things just to make it feel like you're doing it the right way as far as the Montessori perspective is concerned. As long as your child can independently access their clothing without needing to call you for help every single time, that is the primary thing that you're after. So this can be very easily accomplished through a series of baskets or bins on a low shelving system. Or maybe you decide to install a small tension rod that is really low down at your child's level inside of an existing closet where you can hang all of their things. Or maybe you have a dresser in their room already and you can decide to dedicate the bottom one or two drawers, whatever is at their height, to their clothing exclusively and allow them to open and close those drawers to get what they want. And those are just a few ideas out of the many possibilities that are out there. Now in today's video, you're going to see one other option and that is the standalone Montessori wardrobe. And this was just something that my husband and I decided very early on that we wanted to have in each of our girls' rooms because we had the space to do so. But again, I don't want to pressure anyone into thinking that this is what they have to have, that their setup needs to look just like this in order for it to be Montessori because that is not true at all. As I said, there are so many different ways to do it, but I'm hoping that by providing you with a little behind the scenes look as to exactly how I have their wardrobes set up and organized that maybe you'll find some ideas and inspiration for your little one set up in your own home. All right, so this is Mia's wardrobe. And on the right side, I hang up stuff that is either too long or too bulky really to comfortably fit in the drawers. So because it's winter time right now, she's got two little like sweaters and that one actually has pants tucked inside the jacket. But during the summertime, I also like to hang like dresses and bathing suits over there. And then in the drawers, it's pretty standard what I have throughout the year. So the top drawer, is just socks and then headbands, which she actually doesn't wear very much at all anymore, but she did when she was a baby. So this might actually eventually turn into the underwear bin, but right now the undies are right here on this side so that she can easily get them. And then in the second drawer, I've got all of her shirts. And I do like the Marie Kondo style where you like fold them up into like little packets and everything is vertically organized so that you can see exactly what you want and just pull it out. And I think it honestly makes it easier for Mia too when she's selecting her shirts and her pants to see exactly which ones she has because she has favorites and then she'll pull out the one that she wants. And then same thing for her pants drawer. They're all folded vertically. And then in the bottom, I have all of her pajamas. For a very long time, I did not have them folded like this because 
because she liked to open the drawers and just pull things out. It's just a stage that they go through when they're younger. But now she is 22 months, almost 23 months, and she's very good about not doing that. So I finally switched over to actually folding her clothes for her in this way. And then as she gets bigger, I can teach her how to do it. Um, but she is really good at this point at not pulling the clothes out. So it's a nice system and it stays nice and organized. So it's a pretty easy organization system. I've got like all the accessories and like underwear type things up top and then almost like it would go onto your body. So the shirt's up there, the pants down there, and then pajamas are just down there just because. <laughs> So I do like to keep things really minimal in the girls' rooms, and the only thing that is ever on top of Mia's wardrobe are her hatch machine, her little lamp, which is actually controlled remotely by that switch right there so that she can turn it on and off herself if she needs to, and then this little temperature humidity sensor because their rooms are over the garage, and sometimes it gets a little chilly in here in the winter or too hot in the summer, so I like to know exactly what the temperature is, so that always stays up there, but that is it. And the two cords for these things are actually run behind this wardrobe right here on the side that's closed so that she can't get to them. And the whole thing is mounted to the wall through this little thing back here. So there's no way it's ever gonna go anywhere and it's like completely safe for her to be left with unattended. And in case you're wondering, this wardrobe is actually something that my husband and I DIY'd. It's the Ikea four cube calyx shelf. And we took out the shelf that was over here and he installed this little box thing um, by himself and then what we did was purchase the drawer inserts that go inside of each cube it comes with a set of two so we purchased two of the inserts and installed those on that side and turned it into a wardrobe and I actually have an entire video on how we did that and we show you step by step so if you're interested in checking that out I will be sure to link it in the description box down below and then this is Kylie's wardrobe she's almost four years old now and she's had the same wardrobe for about the past year and a half two years and we love it it's the Sprout Alba wardrobe, which I will link down below in case you're interested in checking it out. It's a very similar concept to the one in Mia's room, except that we've got the open shelving over here for baskets instead of drawers. And what I love about it the most is that this little bar right here is adjustable for heights. You can see the other holes right there. So you can adjust it for the size of your child so that they can reach the stuff that's in there. And then all of these shelves are also completely adjustable. There's also a shelf down here that can also be moved up to the top, depending on whatever you want to store in there and then it also has these neat little shaker pegs on the side for hanging whatever and I think Kylie actually usually hangs her robe up here it's just not up right now because it's in the wash it's also slightly taller than the DIY IKEA one that we made so it does accommodate longer clothing for slightly older children which we love so up here she's got all of her little hair bows and accessories and then all of her pairs of socks that she can just easily grab out because they're folded together and then a little basket of undies and then all of her shirts are folded the same way as well as all of her pants and then in the bottom she also has her pajamas so she's got a very similar setup over here she's got some dresses she doesn't really have like long sleeve like sweatshirt type things in her wardrobe because she doesn't really like to wear them so she does have some dresses hanging still even though they're not in season at the moment but she knows that she's really only allowed to wear them on days where we're staying inside because it would otherwise be way too cold and then down here she just keeps her little pair of bed slippers that she wears from time to time. And then the rest of her shoes are all downstairs in our foyer area. So that is how I have my almost two year old and almost four year old's wardrobes organized. I hope that you were able to find some ideas and inspiration as you begin looking into providing your child with independent access to their clothing at home. I have put as many links as I could find in the description box down below to all of the things that I showed you in the video today, just in case something caught your eye and you're interested in checking it out. Now, if you have any wardrobe setup or organization tips of your own that I did not mention in the video today, then please be sure to share those with us in the comments down below, just in case there are other parents out there who are just getting started on this journey and they're really looking for some more ideas and who knows, maybe your idea is something that they hadn't even thought of. If you are interested in learning more about Montessori at home or positive discipline parenting, I offer several e-courses that walk you through it step-by-step, -step, so I I will also be sure to include a link to that in the description box down below in case you're interested in learning more about it. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori
Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with their children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.